Welcome back, everybody. This is our second. Uh, what, 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 what do we call this, Deb? This is our uh, the, the pre-match analysis. The pre-match analysis for the antibody series. Um, this is the second series. We've already had our first match. It was crazy, man. The pre-match analysis and the post-match. What would you call it? Review? Yes, definitely review. I want to talk all about our first match. Like, that's all I want to talk about. It was good, wasn't it? Oh my god. Perfect way to start the series. We had a 3-3 three to three tie. Uh, is that correct? Yep. Three zombie wins, three survival wins. It was perfect draw. No better way to start the series. I know, I thought it was so fantastic to see the Survivors come out, and on their first match, like, they hit a home run. Like, they just, they won the map, you know? It was flawless. It was, it just couldn't have gone any better. Did they even lose anybody? I think they lost one guy, didn't they? Mr. Yeah, Gibson. yeah, Mr. Gibson blew up. But, you know, he blew up a lot. <laughs> like, that's something I remember. Yeah, it was... It was, re it was a really weird match because all of the survival wins were really easy survival wins and all of the zombie wins were really easy zombie wins and there was, like, no middle ground. <laughs> I think there was one round, actually, maybe the fourth round, might have been the fifth round, in which it was, like, more competitive, but it was just one-sided to one team or the other, wasn't it, in every round other than that? Yeah, I really feel like the strategies uh, from both sides were very, very effective. When the survivors played really well together, I mean, it paid off. You know, they won the map. But then same thing with the zombies. The zombies were, they were getting some really good hits in there. I was impressed, uh, even with all the survivors, you know. Yeah, like uh, Tylenol getting those barrel kills every round was funny. <laughs> oh, that, that, I was not expecting that. But he had already planned it. Like, he had the barrel right there at the door. And then someone would walk in and bam, and they're just dead. Yeah, he put some thought into it. And uh, the thing, I, I know that the Survivor team were expecting it, but even though they were expecting it, there was nothing they could do about it. I mean, it's, what, what can you do? Yeah, it was really fun. They played the corners really well. And uh, it was just overall, it was just a really good match. Like, I was happy with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, same. I was too. It was... Um... It was won and lost in the first section of the map. Uh, every round, if, depending on how that first section went, when you go to get the valve, uh, that's that dictates how the rest of the round is going to go. So um, if that went well, you got you got a win. If that went bad, zombies win. So it boiled down to that first section, didn't it? Uh, there was one round where they did get the valve, but um, whoever was Whitey, they managed to infect like three people. And then the survivor team, they fell apart at the gas generator. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, it was... Survivors played so well. I mean, three wins. So, three rounds out of six, survivor wins. That, That's 50%. That, yeah, it's high-level stuff. I mean, I'm not expecting them to get that many wins on any other map. I think three out of six is as, as many as they're going to get in this series. Uh, the maps only get harder, so. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, the how the how did the the leaderboards how did we finish off with the leaderboards after yeah, this first match? Let me pull it up right now. Super Conquer finished in the first position after match one. Super Conquer himself, the server owner. <laughs> well. uh... He's he's actually joint first with Damio, and uh, after that you've got uh, 14k, slightly behind on 33, and he's level with Green Smiley, also on 33. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Yep, all of these players won. Uh, all the guys in the top ten were the guys who um, who won f all three of the survivor rounds, and. Um, Conquer was on top, courtesy of a few extra zombie kills. Demio was on, uh, is in second place, courtesy of uh, a lot of the objective scoring. So uh, getting the valve and uh, finding the fuse, etc. 14k, 
He got third place, courtesy of the most kills, as you would expect. Green Smiley, he he got a few uh, zombie kills, and he did the objective, so a little bit of everything. Um, fifth place, Chicken Nugget got in. Are you serious? He's in fit? Yeah, I didn't expect it, so... Uh... He's currently in the 50 bucks prize position. Let's see if he can hold it and until the end of the series. I'm not expecting him to hold that position. I think that's artificially high, but... Oh. <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me saying that, but he, maybe he can. I mean, he's, he's got some skill, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't, think, uh, I don't think any of the players that are in the top 10, like, honestly, they're all very good at the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm I'm only, I'm only playing with your chicken nugget. <laughs> and uh, current playoff positions look like this: uh, Oxinian, Haxray, Pingo Pongo, Stinky Butt Annihilator, and MCG just sneaking in. But obviously, that's going to be fluctuating throughout the entire series. That that's not going to stay the same after any match. Um. Oh yeah, that Pingo Pongo guy. I, I owe that guy an apology because uh, in the first pre-match, I, I accused him of being like a, a troll and a shit poster. I completely confused him with somebody else. Oh okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pingo Pongo. Well, we appreciate that for sure. <laughs> yeah, you probably didn't like that. Um, oh yeah, you you really need to practice the pronunciation of. Of this guy's name, uh, Oxinian. Uh, Oxinian is that how you say it? Yeah. How did I call it? <laughs> You've been calling him Oxionian. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, yeah, you've been calling him Oxionian. It's, oh no! It's Oxinian. Oxinian, Oxinian. I promise, if I don't get that right in the next match, you guys can all. Maybe I'll, like, do something with my hair. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so Oxinian and Pingo Pongo, please accept our apologies for yes. calling, you, calling you trolls and calling you onion. <laughs> yes, he's, yes. He's a Russian. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping that he doesn't understand uh, <laughs> English too well. Um, just outside of the uh, top ten positions, Mr. Death. And uh, Mr. Death really should have been top. He, um, I think it was the last round that Survivors won. He missed getting in the elevator at the end. Oh, that's and, uh, right. I, I think he was distracted. Uh, I don't know what he was doing, but something distracted him and he missed the elevator. Had he just simply stepped into the elevator, he, he would have been leading like the leaderboard outright above Conquer and Amy. Um, I think, uh, I think, I think he was trying to, because there were some people behind the fence and i think he was trying to like shoot through the fence to kill some zombies what whatever he was doing that split second of loss of focus really cost him he got um 16 points from winning two of the rounds and he got five points for the critical objective he got seven zombie kills so he, he was scoring well in everything and he just he just let these let these points slip through his fingers and uh, so yeah, I'd say he's in an artificially low position. Oh, that's that's too bad. Yeah, that's that's that hurts. <laughs> yeah, it really sucks for him. And uh, actually, I think the same thing happened to you, didn't it? In one of the rounds. Yeah, that <laughs> same round. The sixth round. <laughs> yeah, you you had a survivor's win right there. Well, I you know, usually the gates opened and it said, "Come in, Puck. Come to." Yeah, I was in the back. I wanted to watch everything happening and commentate. <laughs> like the elevator closed, and that was that. <laughs> is that is that what your excuse is going to? Yes, be? yes. Well, I, I I guess that you know how Mister Death is feeling then. Both. Oh yeah. Yeah. In the elevator. You, you could have got some points, Fug. Ah, it's okay. I, I I had a good time just watching, honestly. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, 12th, uh, Tyler North. He was uh, playing zombie every round. He got all of his points from from zombie scoring. 
You got one kill streak, which would have been six or more kills or infection in the same round, and 18 uh, zombie kill points. So he finished on 24 points. Four points outside of the top 10 positions. So um, considering that survivors won less rounds than they normally would, I think he's not in a prize position yet, but I think he can be happy with, with 12. Yeah, I, I think Tylenol's... Um, is he going to play zombie on the next map? Do you know? He's committed to playing zombie every every match. I, I get the feeling that um, with with the survivors losing more rounds and him, you know, being consistent with these zombie points, I I, get, I have a really good feeling he could get to the top. Yeah, he's he's going to rise after every match. Uh, I he's he's going nowhere except up, in my opinion. There's survivors aren't getting that many wins in any other match i'm, I'm coming out now and i'm saying that <laughs> three wins in any of the other matches so all the next matches are going to be more and more zombie dominated so he's just going to go up and up if he's committed to playing as uh as whitey i i i rubbed whitey off him a few times so i think he was a bit annoyed <laughs> he still did his best though you got to give him credit yeah it was it was a really difficult map to be a zombie after after the first section because there were so many explosives, uh, IEDs and grenades. It was, I mean, we spawned and we were dead just immediately. We just oh, wow. couldn't get anywhere near him. Just, it was, I think it's a bit of a ridiculous amount of IEDs and grenades. I think it was super overkill putting that many in, but it definitely helped the survivors. I, I don't think they would have won. I don't think they would have won without those IEDs and grenades. Yeah, they definitely would have lost at least a couple more. Yeah. Who's next? Uh, Hell God. Uh, who's Hell God? I think that is Rin. So okay. He's one of the new players. So uh, he got into 13th. He's um, eight points outside of the price positions, but. I mean, that over the it could change. The season, yeah, over the course of the season, that's that's nothing to be honest, is it? You could catch that up in a couple of rounds. Then we've got Batty, Kid. I was super impressed with that kid. Yeah, um, oh, that's for sure. Yeah, he was he was popping zombie heads. He's he's one of those players that's just really talented with the revolver. Yeah. I never played with him before that though. I'd never even heard of him before that, so. It's kind of fun seeing these guys come out of the woodworks, you know, just for the tournament. Yeah, where did they come from? I mean, if, if they've got that amount of skill, like, you'd think that you'd know about them. You'd think that you would have seen them around for this guy. I mean, ton of skill. What rocks have been living under? Yeah, it's really fun to see these guys come out and to see them play the way they did. Because honestly, that that's what, we're seeing some of the best Zombie Panic Source players, you know, in the tournament. Yeah, when you get them all together, I mean, like 14k Damio, this guy kid, just, man, if you give them free revolver, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. After him, we've got Necroche Groover Blade, right now, I'm not sure who that is. Pop-Tart, uh, Reborn, me, me down in 20th. <laughs> Lasky, Mr. Gibson, Mr. Gibson, he, he was the only person to start Survivor in all three of the Survivor winning rounds and die in all of the rounds. <laughs> he's such a nice guy, though, you know that? He's, he's a nice guy, but it was, uh, it was a pretty awful performance, to be honest. You know, you know everybody needs to have your ma the guy on the team that like inspires you, you know? And I think that's what Mr. Gibson was. Like, seeing him blow up <laughs> over and over again, it gave the survivors the opportunity to win. You know what I mean? Yeah, he uh, he could turn out to be this season's uh, Maxi's gold. <laughs> you know the problem was with Max? No matter what he did, he'd always get killed in some like, ridiculous way. Like, no matter what. Yeah, I've tried messaging him. I can't, I can't find him. He's uh, he's ghosting. I, the season uh, doesn't quite have the same feel without him, but I think this 
this guy, Mr. Gibson, can fill his shoes a little bit. He seems he seems to have the same uh, unfortunate tendencies as, as Max. Well, and, and you know, I don't think these people do it on purpose. I think it's almost like everybody was standing back that first round. That nobody wanted to go in the room with <laughs> Mr. Gibson. He just walks right in, and Tylenol just blows him up. <laughs> It's like, okay, now go in. And it's like he was the sacrificial lamb, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, I know for a fact they don't do it on purpose. Some players just have a funny play style. (laughs) This this guy's uh, one of them, apparently. As was Max. There's no way Max got run over on Zomboing by the truck. He did. He got right, actually. I, I just, I'll never forget that. I'm like, dude, just walk next to the truck. But then we walked right in front of it, and then it ran him over. <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh. That made it into the uh, Season 1 uh, series highlights video. I'm pretty sure um, it's only been one match, but I'm pretty sure those barrel killers from Thailand are getting into the uh, series highlights video. And I tell you what, Max, in uh, Yethlin's tournaments... I remember he got infected during one of them. I think it was River. And he turned at the last second. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, he just missed out on the cash prize. And then to see him get run over by a truck and all these random things, it's just like the guy didn't have any luck. <laughs> well, he, um, if he wasn't as unfortunate as he was, we wouldn't be talking about him right now. So It was very memorable. He doesn't have the cash in his pocket, no, but what is a little bit of cash compared to this legacy that he's created? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, final play, 20 per position, via row. He scored a single point, just one zombie kill. I'm trying to remember who that is. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think it might be in a, a random L. Okay, well... So far, we've looked at the standings. We've talked a little bit about the first match. Now let's talk about match number two, Rescue Point. Yeah. Well, what do you know about it, Pug? Are you familiar with it? Uh, the first time I played Rescue Point was uh, maybe a year or two ago, I think. It rotated onto Conquer's server. And, you know, at the time, I was like, oh, I don't recognize this map. And so, you know, it was all brand new to me. But we couldn't beat it. We kept losing. But, you know, on Conquer Server, we really enjoy, um, like, when we find a map we can't beat, it's like we want to beat it. It's like everyone keeps voting it on until we beat it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that that's how it was. Like, we were trying to beat this map, and every time we'd get a little bit farther, we'd get a little bit farther, we'd get a little bit farther, and we'd realize, holy shit, like, this map is unbeatable. But it was a really good map. Like, it was fun to play. Like, there was a lot of ammo. And you had to be, but you had to be good with it too because of the zombie spawns. Um, like I, I really am looking forward to seeing uh, how the survivors fare on this map. Like the good ones, like Day Mayo and all the other guys. You get these guys together, and I want to see what they can do with this map. I want to see if we can push them to their limit because they're going to need to manage everything. They got to manage their ammo. They got to watch each other's backs. They're going to be be hit. They're going to get hit from behind and in the front. At the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. totally. It's um, it's actually one of my favorite favorite maps. It was one of my nominations to uh, to be an entry in the series. I couldn't have been happier when uh, when all of the players decided that they liked it too and vote, voted it in. So um, I, I love this map. It's, I think it's going to be similar to um, Ancient in in uh, in it being. In the way it can be decided in the first couple of minutes, if uh, when you're going for the first objective, that radio, I mean, if you lose a couple of survivors there, if you struggle to get to that radio and you get cut off and the zombies start dominating that whole area, I mean, it's, it's zombies win and it can be over that quickly in two minutes or something. It's not easy. And uh, after that bit, it, gets a bit easier but there's still a lot of uh like stumbling points uh the sewers so was yeah they flood so survivors are gonna need to drain that so that they can move a little bit faster uh what else uh that shutter that you need to open that that shutter is uh 
that's a critical point. I mean, you need to fully open the shutter in order for the shutter to stay open. So um, if you get a little bit of a greedy survivor who just opens it enough for himself to slip under and then, like, fuck everybody else, I mean, they're going to have to start opening it again from the beginning. Or at least it's going to drop a little bit. So um, I think they all need to cover whoever's opening it until it's fully open so that any stragglers can get through, everyone can get through, players that are distracted covering the team can all get through. Because there, there is a tendency to just open it enough for myself, sneak through, and then and then I'm good. And then it lowers and everyone else is stuck outside. I see that as a potential stumbling block. Oh, I'm very curious to see, you know, that whole map. The, the cool part about this map is between the train yard and the baseball field, there's a little town. And, like, you're talking about these shutters, you know. But there's also a gun shop by the shutters. And you can go to that gun shop and completely ignore the shutters. And I'm curious to see if survivors will split off and not support each other and get all split up in the town. Instead of going through, you know, working together and just getting to the next... So I'm really curious to see what they do here. Are they going to go for the ammo? Are they going to open the shutters? Like, what are they going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah, there is, uh, there's quite a lot of ammo in that in that small town. And they're going to need it to defend the... Uh, what is it? A baseball field? That's right. It's a baseball field. The good news is, if they can get to the baseball field with a good number of survivors and a good bit of ammo, it is quite easy to hold it from that point. But... Getting to that point is tough, but once you're there, play your cards right. It's it's very holdable. There's I think there's only two ways into it, so and the narrow pathways, you can't really miss the zombies once they're in there. So um Yeah, we'll see if they get that far. Uh, I'm I'm really excited. That's what I'm looking forward to the most is when they break out of that train yard and then they have to make some decisions. I wanna see what the survivors do. Because we don't know what they're going to do, you know? It's... We never know. I mean, that train yard is tough too, isn't it? I mean, it's very, very narrow. Uh... They've got they've got these little holes in the sides where zombies can sit in and crouch, I think. And they can literally just sit there waiting for a survivor to come by. Like, it's insane. Those, those That train yard section right there is absolute... Because you got to go through one alley and then you gotta come back around through another alley and it's like yeah. there's too there's a lot of corners and then you've got zombies coming out of the sewers too so you're getting hit yeah. from both sides you're getting sandwiched yeah it's it's a perfect ambush point for the zombies but i i still think that the zombies need to do a good chunk of the work in that first section uh around the radio before the survivors go down the manhole and, um, yeah, I think if they can do that, it's maybe, I'm going to say, survivors will do well to get one win. You think they're only going to get one win? <laughs> I, f I think they might do well to get one win. And I have been very accurate with my predictions, I must say. Oh, only one survivor. We're going to have six matches and only one survivor win? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm standing by that prediction. All right, I'll tell you what. I think the Survivors can win three times. I think they're going to lose the first three, and then they're going to win the next three. That's why I, th I think they're going to mess up enough times, or maybe they'll even win one, like you said, but I think it'll be one of the last rounds they win. It won't be the first round. I, I really hope that they lose the first round, because... I never like it when the survivors win the first round. They won the first round on Ancient, and it like uh, it takes the pressure off them. I like it when they have to fight through all the rounds to get a win at the very end or in the later rounds. It's like the pressure builds on them every time that they lose. That like right. they're, running out, they're running out of rounds in which they can win. But when they get a win in the first round, it just like completely takes the pressure off everyone, and I don't really like that. I'm kind of sadistic with it. Yeah, I'm. I'm really hoping as the rounds continue, they start learning from their mistakes. I really think. I really think they're gonna lose at that train yard, at the shutter, like you were saying, and they'll keep losing to the point where, hey, you know, what are we doing wrong? 
you know, people are going to start talking. They're going to say, hey, you know what? Ignore that ammo over in the gun shop. We've got ammo we could pick up once we're through the shutters. Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. In uh, in regular servers, survivors do tend to just commit the same mistakes over and over again. It's like, why are you not learning from your mistakes? Why, why, why are you following this course of action when it clearly isn't working? But the tournament teams... They're, they're different. They are more adaptive. They they will if they're doing something stupid. They will get on each other's backs. Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, even in ancient, the zombie team and the survivor team, they were both very dynamic with their tactics, and they tried to improve every round on them. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it, it really was. And um, as with the last match, uh, we have some critical objective scoring. For this match, it's going to be one point for activating the radio. So that's dangerous because it takes you up into the uh, the zombie spawn area. Like uh, The survivors have a tendency to go to the manhole immediately. That's where most of them are going to hold up. It's going to be a few brave souls that go for this uh, radio. I think there's a sledgehammer up there, a revolver up there. So that's going to tempt people like Damio and 14K in. Um, but it is where the zombie spawns are, so um, zombies will have a chance to get one of the one of these brave players if they could get Damio or fourteen K on the team within a minute. I mean, it's a write off, isn't it? So um, it's a really dangerous place to go. So um, that's why we've given uh, one point for whoever activates the radio. Another point for draining the flooded area. Uh, just one point so that survivors can move faster. It takes you a little bit off course. So uh, whoever drains the flooded area, they're, they're going to be putting themselves maybe 20 seconds behind the group of, of survivors, isolating themselves a little bit. So we're going to give them a point for that. And once you get to the baseball field, if you can grab the flares and place at least three of them, that's worthy of a one point bonus too. Yeah, and you know, we might we might see some some like survivors that we only get two or three survivors at the baseball field. You know what I mean? I think if they can get I think if they can get six or seven they can hold it. Any less than that, I think the zombies will swamp it. But six or seven, considering there's only two entrances to get into the baseball field, might just be enough. So um we might end up seeing some high value survivor wins. If there's less than uh, how many? If there's less than seven or less, that's uh, a high value survivor win. So that could be possible. Oh, so what's the what's the bonus for a high value survivor win? Um fifteen or more survivors is eight points. Eight to fourteen survivors, twelve points. Two to seven survivors, 15 points, and a lone survivor is 20 points. Oh, wow. So they're getting some really good points here by having lower uh, survivor count wins. Yeah, the fewer survivors, the more points. Because uh, I guess if there's fewer survivors, that means they've had to work harder, is the theory behind it. That makes sense. <laughs> and uh, the, there was one other, we really wanted to put a point bonus for opening the shutter uh, because that's a really crucially important job, but we just couldn't find a way, me and Reborn, we couldn't find a way to uh, implement it. So uh, unfortunately, we had to scrap that idea. And, you know, it, it it is what it is. We will still, you know, honor the rest of the point system. I think it's a really good point system you guys have set up this year. It's been yeah. really good. I feel like it's been fair. And it really shows, um, except, you know, with Mr. Death that one time, that's got to suck. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that's, like, awful, man. It, it was a costly mistake. Oh. But, but, but it, it is fair. I mean, looking at the table from the first match, I think it is really, I think it is reflective of who the best players were. I, I don't think anyone's, like, too far out of position, except Nugget. Ah. Watch, Chicken Nugget's going to end up winning the whole series, and you're just going to be like, oh, I'm so... Because <laughs> you filmed all these, talking trash about him, and then he ends up winning. What would you do? Yeah. <laughs> Eat my words, I guess. <laughs> and um, 
just uh, anybody who's not currently played the first match and isn't currently in the leaderboard, if if you start the series now, you still have a chance of getting into a prize position. It's not like, oh, I've missed the first match. Like, I've, I have no chance of catching up. If, if you play, if, if you even miss a couple of matches, you still have a chance of uh, rising up the league and getting into these positions. But obviously, the people who play every match are, are going to be the favourites to... Uh, get into those positions just from the pure fact that they've played more but if if you're new and you want to sign up and uh, it's not too late to uh to get involved you know and we've been we've been getting a lot of new people uh, in the server and also you know just watching and i've really enjoyed that i've loved seeing these people come back to zps they're like hey you know like i used to play that game and it's kind of fun to see these people come back and this is why we do the tournaments, you know, we want to bring these people back because, you know, at one time in their life, at some point in their life, they were like, you know what, this is the coolest game ever. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you're coming back to ZPS in 2023, that, that means it holds a special place in your heart. That's right. You made an impression. Um, talking about new players, there are a few in the signed up list. Um, just looking at the sign-up list, it's a lot of the usual suspects. Uh, Batty, Mr. Gibson, Official Pingo, who is not a troll. <laughs> Ch 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 Chicken Nugget, good. Necroach, uh, Lol, Lol High, I can't pronounce it, it's Russian. Charo, who unfortunately, our defending champion, who unfortunately couldn't, couldn't connect to the first match. He's... Uh, experience in uh, power outages and Ukraine war stuff so uh, wow. yeah he's struggling with it new players we have a guy called Hunter okay can't tell, can't tell you anything about him Matthew W also can't tell you anything about him Pop Tart Gunner Oxinian who is not an onion Oxinian Oxinian <laughs> Yes, practice before the next match. I... Uh, Oxy Onion. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I couldn't help it. I mean, you're, you're focusing on a lot of things when you're streaming, so, uh, yeah. Uh, we forgive you, Pug. Okay. <laughs> Domo King. Um, another new guy, Useless Narukami. Demio, Super Conquer, our current leader who refuses to accept the rules and just meows instead. Hey, you know what? He deserves all... He can meow as much as he wants. It's fine. Yeah, it's a good job I speak cat, so uh, whatever. Uh, strawberries and Cream. He's... Um, I, I know of Strawberries and Cream. He's He's been in the server for a while. Uh, he didn't p participate in the first match. Uh, Green Smiley, my boy. Tylenol, my second boy. MCG, Upia. A new guy here is Senti. So welcome. Hope you know how to play. Rin, Mr. Death, and Stinky Butt Annihilator. So we are currently uh, over the 24th lot that the server has. So um, even though you signed up, you're going to be on a timer as well competing against all of the other players in the signed-up list. It's, it, when it's above 24 players signed up, you, you're all going to get the password, but it's going to be on a first-come, first-serve basis. That's right. That's why it's so important. And, you know, it actually makes makes us start on time. Like, you guys, like, people don't even realize this, but having all the players already in the match, you know, half an hour early, practicing, you know, that makes such a huge difference for us because we can actually start on time. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the old chat away and do a little bit of team bonding. So, uh, yeah, it's good to get, get them all in, warmed up, r rather than going in completely cold. And and that's the, that's the thing I do enjoy about having the signed up list. You know, you guys, are once you get that password, jump in, you know, start talking to your teammates, practice the map. This is a good time. Yeah, well, the the server gets restarted like an hour before the match or something just to get maximum performance. And uh, from that point onwards, you're, you're free to jump in. 
Like uh, the AFK boot is disactivated, so as soon as the server's disactivated, you can you can jump in and then just go about your business until it starts and not have to worry about losing your slot. Yeah, I am really excited though. Um, I'm really hoping that this time around this match, we're gonna see some stuff that we didn't get to see in Ancient. Cause you know with Ancient, I'm not gonna lie, the survivors they did have a lot of help. They had a lot of IEDs had a lot of grenades. There's not as many IEDs and grenades in this map. Yeah, where, where, are, your, where are your IEDs now, survivors? <laughs> that, you, you're, you, it's like you said, as a zombie, it must have been really frustrating getting blown up over and over again. Yeah, it was it was really difficult, but... I, I was expecting survivor wins on that map. I wasn't expecting free, but... Yeah, I mean, they, they earned it. Well, now we're. <laughs> that's like, I'm, I'm, I, I just, I want to see one win at least. That's what I want to see. You know what I mean? Yeah, one win would be, it'd really shoot the zombies up, up the table. So, Tylenol could even get into like, uh, like the top three. Like it seems like a big jump, but if survivors don't get any wins, expect to see zombie players like Domo King and Tylenol like make huge jumps in the league table. Yeah, and let's see. We got Rescue Point, and then after Rescue Point, it just gets harder, right? It's not like it's going to get easier. Um, it's pretty well. Uh, the way I did the schedule of of maps was by order of votes received. So, uh, Ancient got the fewest votes, and the Thing got the most votes. So, Ancient went Ancient went first. Thing goes last, but. Apart from that, it does seem to go in like ascending order of difficulty, just by coincidence. Like ancient being the easiest, the thing being the hardest, just total coincidence. Because it wasn't, it wasn't like sorted by by difficulty. It was sorted by votes received. But it's just a total coincidence that it does go in order of difficulty as well. Yeah, I'm really excited to see that. Uh, as it's, we see the three survivor wins on ancient. And then we get, as we move along here, <laughs> you know, it's just going to become less and less. I don't even know if they're going to win the thing. I think I've only seen it won a handful of times. Yeah, it's it's probably less than 5% win percentage on the thing. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm pumped up like a little balloon or something. Dude, man, I'll tell you what. We're going to see some great survivor plays. We're going to see some great zombie plays. It's just going to be great ZPS all around. This weekend's going to be awesome. Yes, totally. And um, just before we finish, Pug, there's um, one more thing I wanted to raise. There is some bonus prizes. Bonus prizes? Bonus prizes, you say? Bonus prizes? Yes, the... Um... As we discussed in the previous pre-match, uh, positions 6 through 10 are going into the Devil's Playground. That is correct. Winner gets 50 bucks, and until I decided to be generous, all of the runners up in the Devil's Playground got nothing. But I found something that I couldn't live without, and the uh, I don't think the ZPS community can live without. I don't know how we've lived our lives until this point without them. So I bought four of them, one for each of the runners up, and can you guess what they are? I know you can't because it's impossible. Uh, you bought them uh, something, something, uh, it's some kind of like club membership, right? No, that couldn't be further from what it is. It's a otter shower curtain. What? Otter? An otter shower curtain. Otter, like otter, you know, the guy that's like, yeah, vote for cinema. Yeah, the guy, the guy who <laughs> plays exclusively cinema and PGM office. He has, uh, he has a little profile picture of what some stupid people think is a horse, which is clearly a, a baboon. A baboon. Yeah, and it's become like a bit of a, a symbol of, of otter and a symbol of, of the game. And uh, I found it on a shot on a shower curtain. It was no a way! 
<laughs> it was also on a duvet cover. Shall I tell you how I found it? I found it because um, everyone was saying that this image of Otter was a horse. I was, I couldn't get my head around why they were saying it. It's clearly a baboon. Like, <laughs> like clearly a baboon. And uh, so I, I looked for the exact image on Google. Somehow found the image with a confirmation that it was a baboon. And I was like, yes, I found it. And whilst, whilst, I, do, whilst I was doing that and telling Conker, yeah, you were wrong, I was right, haha. <laughs> Um, I came across this shower curtain of Otter, and I thought, damn, damn, I can't live without that. <laughs> and and, and da damn, that would be a really good uh, consolation prize. It's uh, so these players finishing uh, runners up from the uh, Devil's Playground. They, they don't take nothing home, so they get a bit of something. Pop Tart, you know, you know, Pop Tart. Yeah. He was saying that he's going to finish in the Devil's Playground positions on purpose. Oh, okay. To have a chance of winning one of these auto shower curtains. That's, uh, you know what? Sign me up. Maybe if I could get into the devil's playground. My wife would kill me if I hung that up in her shower. Maybe she'd love it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to see a picture of it. I hope you post a picture of it. You, you, you've seen Otter's profile picture. It's it's that profile. It's picture. literally just his profile picture on a shower it's curtain. His profile picture, and we have a we have a an emoji of it in the Discord. It's just that, but on a shower curtain. Oh my god! And it is amazing. It's so good. <laughs> I, actually, I, I bought five of them. One for myself. Oh, so you you bought one for yourself? That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> It's conversation starter. That's for sure. And uh, I, I don't think Pop, I don't think Pop Tart realized that if he was to get like into the top five and get one of the real prizes, that he could afford him, he could afford himself uh, an Otter shower curtain. <laughs> but no, he's uh, he's on purpose going to go for the Devil's Playground, and he's going to on purpose not win the Devil's Playground, so he gets a runners-up prize. He's going out of his way. <laughs> This is really fun, Deb. I'm glad that uh, you found this and that you're including it into uh, the prize match. It's really cool to see uh, what our players come up with in the community. Like It's like you said, people who play ZPS know Otter. They know that guy. Yeah, I mean, to, to, any, to anybody who doesn't know ZPS and doesn't know Otter, it's, it's nothing. Like, you wouldn't have it given. You just couldn't appreciate it, but... Everyone in the community, like, I think they will value it as much as, as I did. And I'm not going to tell you how much they were, but they weren't cheap. Not so cheap, Pug. <laughs> well, we appreciate everything you've done so far, Deb. Honestly, we couldn't do this tournament without you. You know, like, you're the one that's taken the time to get it all set up. Get it set up in a way where it's, it's, it's enjoyable, you know? Like, this is enjoyable. It's organized. It's fair, and it's fun. Like, what else? What more can you want? You know? Yeah, there's there's nothing else in life as good as the, especially when you do it with a bottle of wine and maybe some like uh, little cheese cubes or something. <laughs> there you go. Everybody, please, if you don't think you're good enough at playing ZPS, at least come and join and watch us. Like, we, we're having so much fun doing this. I actually had a buddy uh, of mine, I, I sent the the last match to him, and he watched the stream. He told me, he said, that was so much fun to watch. And you know what? I guarantee all of you, if you just come and watch, you're going to have a good time. Bring your, bring your bottle of wine, bring your cheese, and just have a good time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good fun. Whether or not you're, you're competing to get a prize, I mean... Some players are more competitive than others. Some some people are specifically signing up to try and win a prize. O others are just um, wanting to experience some good ZPS. So um, even if you're miles behind in the league table, if you just want to show up, I mean, just just for the fun of it, just have a good game. Uh, that's fine too. I mean, we, we don't care. That's right. And I, I personally enjoy seeing... Like, you know, our last antibody series, I, I spent most of the time on the sidelines. But, you know, I'm really glad you gave me that opportunity this year to, to sit in on the, is it the last two rounds? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to jump in on uh, the last two rounds, that's cool. 
Oh my god. I don't miss getting into the elevator. You could have been. In fact, where would you have been? Had you simply stepped into the elevator, Pug, where would you have been? You would have been. You would have had. Okay, you would have been 17th. So not so impressive, but <laughs> I didn't do much. I was I was trying to commentate, you know. You you would have been within eleven points of uh, a top ten position, so. But whatever, you live and learn. You will never miss the elevator again after that. I'm sure. Lesson. <laughs> it's a I, lesson. I enjoyed every second of just being a part of that teamwork, seeing it in action. It was so cool. Yeah, really cool. Right, well, uh, I guess we've covered everything. Yeah, you know, and uh, I feel like, I think we're, we're pretty good on time, too. So, I guess to kind of finish it off, uh, all I can say is, everyone out there, you know, whether you're playing, or you're watching, or, you, you know, you might find this video 10 years from now, and you're going to be like, who the hell are these guys? And we're going to be like in our 40s and shit, and we're still playing ZPS. You know what? Just come on down. Come come hang out with us. Let's have a good time. Yep, it's uh, we've we've got great admin. Uh, we've got a great structure. We've got great players. Great maps. It's it's not nothing more you could want. It's just really good fun, and uh, everyone should come and play. All right. Well, once again, everybody, we want to thank you all for coming out, watching the video. Uh, if you're about to watch the stream, get your popcorn out, like. Let's go, baby. I, we're gonna play this before the stream, right? Tell me we are. Um, if survivors, if the signed up players want to get together in the participant chat and organize something, then uh, that would be beneficial to them. But as an organizer, I'm not gonna be putting anything on. So it's if they want to prepare, it's on their own time, on their own backs. Okay. Well, now we know. We have been informed. We have been uplifted this night. So now it's time to end. Uh, any last predictions? I think you said one, right? 5-1 uh, to the zombies. I'm going to go with, you know, three is a lot. You're right, three is a lot. Let's go 2-4. Two, two, uh, they're not winning this one three times. Yeah, I don't think they're going <laughs> to. I don't think they're going to. They might get a win or two. So 2-4. Two to four. I predict fun. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, whoever it was, just one final thought, whoever it was who put the uh, Super Chat donation in the live stream, thank you. I am I never, not sure if it was someone from the Discord or just a, a subscriber, but if you're listening, thank you. It's appreciated that that will go to funding the prizes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking, uh, thinking we're going to be seeing more of those, Deb. Yeah, we just so give it enough time. <laughs> well, if, if the the dream is Pug, to break even, like I, I'm not interested in making any profit. Just the dream is to break even, to be able to finance all the prizes and the server and everything, just through the donations in the stream, so that we can keep doing these every year. Uh, that's the holy grail. But as for making profit, nah, fuck it. Hey, you know, I tell you one thing, man. Like. These kind of things, it's like you said, you lose a couple dollars, but what's that to these memories that we're making? Yeah, I mean, if I wasn't doing the antibody series, I'd be spending the same amount of money going to the club once a month. So uh, I can get my fun at the club or I can get my fun in the antibody series. I mean, fun is fun. Exactly. Well, once again, man, thank you for taking your time. We love you, Deb. We appreciate you. You, you kill it. Hey, man, for everyone that's still listening, you need to go to this guy's channel. You need to watch his No More Room in Hell videos. He just beat one of the hardest maps I have ever played in my life. I hate that map. What, what was it? Caffrey? Caffrey, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, I tried... I would just pop it and die, and then he would... Somehow he beat the whole map. I don't know how he did it, but, yeah, Deb is... You know, like, we got the Antibody series here, but go to his YouTube channel, subscribe. You know, he, he really works hard to win these unwinnable maps. <laughs> like, it's insane to me. So, I, I appreciate your kind words, Puck. Well, let's go ahead and finish then. Everybody, we hope you have a good night. We, we are so excited to see you. 
Do not miss this match. Watch the video after if you can't make it to the stream. But uh, yeah, let's have a great match. Yep, Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. All right, everybody, we're signing off. Have a great rest of your day. Let's go!